In the early hours of the 21st of June, 1942, the British forces in the fortress of Tobruk in Libya surrendered. 33,000 British soldiers were taken prisoner. Rommel had been leading German and Italian troops in North Africa for more than 16 months. Tobruk was the pinnacle of Rommel's military career. As a result, Hitler made him a field marshal. The victors were exultant, the British in despair. We were lined up by our officers in the usual threes, and there we were standing, having blown up our equipment. I think it was a terrible feeling of shame. And particularly, we felt that as the Australians had, had held it, we have uh, tucked it away. And uh, I, I, we were not happy about that. At the same time in Washington, Churchill was visiting Roosevelt. During their talks, Churchill heard that Tobruk had fallen. His chief of staff later wrote in his memoirs. For the first time in my life, I saw the Prime Minister wince. But what I remember so clearly was, Mr. Churchill was in Washington with visiting President Roosevelt when that happened. And I think he must have felt a sense of shame because so many soldiers had surrendered. And Mr. Roosevelt immediately said, what can we do to help you? And he offered him a lot of Sherman tanks which were going to be sent to the American forces who were in North Africa, but they were now to be given to the British. And Mr. Churchill never forgot that generous gesture. We all thought Rommel would win. He only had to get to Cairo. Furthermore, according to Egyptian politicians, whom I got to know after the war, they were ready to form a government that was favorably disposed to the Axis. And the British in Cairo had already begun to retreat after they lost the battle of Marsa Matru. This place marked the turning point in the North African War and in Rommel's career. The British war correspondent, Dennis Johnston, described it. A small railway station set in the midst of some hundreds of miles of absolutely nothing. That is El Alamein. And I looked on the map and saw this little mark on the map on the coast, El Alamein. I didn't realize then how famous it would become. And eventually, we, it took us about two days, and we got back to uh, this place. And I could see the uh, in British infantry and the, and the artillery digging in. And right across the... Rommel's position at El Alamein became more critical by the day. Dearest Lou, it can't go on like this or the front will collapse. These are the hardest days of my military life. You know that I'm an incorrigible optimist but there are places where it's completely dark. You're Irvin. Now Rommel only showed confidence for the cameras. It gave me such a shock, and that turned us into deadly serious grown-up people. On the 8th of August, 1942, Churchill visited the British troops in North Africa. He was accompanied by Rommel's new opponent, Lieutenant General Bernard Law Montgomery. He had a reputation for being obstinate. I had just taken over Chief of Staff of 7th Armour Division, and this uh, a rather small man arrived with a rather large pair of shorts 
and very white, knobbly knees. Uh, 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 and you thought, who is this curious man? <laughs> and I just had a pair of shorts on, no shirt, and he stood at the top of the uh, communication trench and he said to me, how long have you been in the desert, soldier? I said, about 15 months, sir. He said, well, don't worry. He said, you won't be here very much longer. Rommel knew, and I got wind of it too, that the British Army was incredibly well provided with reinforcements. Rommel said again and again, if we achieve anything, then it must be as quickly as possible, before the British start their offensive. In Massa Matru, on the 24th of August, 1942, Rommel was examined in the army hospital. He'd already asked Hitler for his replacement. His doctor wrote, His present condition is a result of extreme physical and psychological exertion. A nurse did some lab tests. And then he was suddenly supposed to have diphtheria. But diphtheria, a children's illness, really wasn't credible in these circumstances. After three days, Rommel had to stop. It was all over. The mood at Rommel's HQ was dismal. If we don't win El Alamein, Africa so we is lost. already suspected, even in September, what we were in for. On the 21st of October, 1942, at El Alamein, Montgomery had 200,000 soldiers, more than 1,000 tanks, and 1,500 aircraft at his disposal. That was three times as many as the Germans and Italians had.